Hello again. Um, as I think I explained at the beginning of this series, uh, basically these films I'm talking about are really just literally the random films that I've found, uh, random obscure British films that I've found and I watch every Saturday night. Um, I've been doing this for about the last year or so, you know. That's my Saturday night, you know, no going out on the town for me. I stay at home and watch old obscure British films. Anyway, um, they are mostly pretty obscure and um, quite a few of them are, are not that brilliant. I mean, they're fairly mediocre, but I find them, a lot of them very interesting and enjoyable because of their period feel. That's what I like about old British films, the 30s, 40s and 50s, sometimes the 60s as well. It's just the way that they evoke a lost world. And, and I enjoy all the incidental stuff uh, connected with that, uh, regardless of whether they're good films or not. But on this occasion, I want to talk about a British film that really is a very good film. I think it's one of the outstanding British films of that period, probably of any period, in fact. Um, and it's unlike some of the other things I, I'm going to talk about on this channel. It's actually a, a pretty serious film. Uh, it's a, quite a dark film. And it's a film called Odd Man Out, directed by Carol Reed uh, and produced in 1947. Now, uh, Carol Reed is famous for uh, being one of the few British exponents of film noir. And his most famous film probably is The Third Man, which pretty much everybody who's interested in film anyway has heard of. Um, now, that's a great film. Uh, there's also Fallen Idol, which is another famous one of his. Now, Odd Man Out is perhaps not so well known, but uh, it's, it's well known in film circles. But I believe that it ought to be as famous as The Third Man, because in, I think in its way it's a, a greater film. Um, perhaps Third Man is more perfect as a piece of filmmaking, uh, more accomplished. But Odd Man Out, I think, is one of the, the most emotionally intense British films I know. And I can only think of one or two other ones, actually, that compare to it. There's a film which I intend to talk about later on this channel, uh, which is similar in the atmosphere, in a, in a way, and that's a film called The Passing of the Third Floor Back, starring Conrad Veidt. Um, it's not much of a title, uh, but I think it also has a bit of a cult following, and that's a very powerful film emotionally. Um, and also, um, probably Powell and Pressburger's A Canterbury Tale has a similar, very intense emotional atmosphere. But apart from that, Odd Man Out, I think, is one of the most impressive, uh, powerful and emotionally intense and moving British films almost of any period. Um, and uh, I think it's Carol Reed. It shows that Carol Reed really was one of our outstanding film directors and probably ought to be known better. So, Odd Man Out is set in Belfast in Northern Ireland and it concerns a chap called Johnny played by the great James Mason, and of course that alone makes the film uh, likely to be outstanding, because I think James Mason is one of the really far and away the best British actors of the 20th century, film actors. Um, and he plays a, a character called Johnny, who is the head of something called The Organisation, uh, which is a thinly veiled uh, depiction of the IRA, basically. Um, now the IRA in the 1940s was fairly quiescent, I think, so it was possible to make a film like that then. I don't think you could have done it later. Uh, and even now it would be difficult because there's just so much, so much water has flowed under the bridge in that area since then. But anyway, we won't go into that now. This is not primarily, uh, as it says at the beginning, it's not really a film about politics or about um, the ideas or the causes on both sides. It's a film actually about individuals uh, and their experience of, of uh, being caught up in this terrible conflict. Um, and anyway, uh, it's set in Belfast in the 1940s. Now, Belfast in the 1940s, even more probably than London or other cities in Britain, was a, 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 an old-fashioned Victorian city. And one of the great things about the film, for me, is the way that it captures that atmosphere, the atmosphere of 40s Belfast. Um, as I said, it's a very dark film, and it's a dark film in more than one sense. I mean, a lot of the action actually takes place at night, um, most of the action takes place at night. Um, also, it's uh, literally dark. It's a black and white film, and it's filmed in a very stark kind of black and white. So you get these very powerful arresting images, which are, uh, to me, they're reminiscent of woodcuts, actually, which is one of my favourite kinds of illustration. 
they have a kind of starkness. And then thirdly, of course, it is dark in the sense of uh, being a dark subject. It's about a dark subject. And basically the subject is, it, it has a kind of quasi-mystical or religious overtone. The, the subject is really uh, life and death. It's about um, Johnny uh, and his, his friends, his colleagues, uh, in various ways facing up to death. And uh, without giving too much away about the story, what happens is that Johnny has come out of prison, quite a long prison sentence, and in fact he's, he's still not really recovered, he's a bit, he's, he, he, as he says himself, uh, get, prison gives you time to think, and he's not even quite sure if he really believes in the cause anymore, but he feels he's got to lead this raid, there's a raid on a, on a bank, uh, a bank raid, which goes wrong when they're escaping, um, they're armed, by the way. When they're escaping, um, a security guard tries to interfere. Uh, there's a sh shootout between Johnny and the security guard. Johnny is quite badly wounded. The security guard is killed. And then the escape is bungled, and Johnny ends up being left lying in the street, badly wounded, in the middle of Belfast. And um, so the, the rest of the story is actually about Johnny trying desperately in, a, in a, an increasingly bad state uh, both mentally and physically trying desperately to get back to safety and he goes on this strange kind of um, journey through nighttime Belfast and he encounters a series of, a random series of characters uh, uh, during this journey and I won't tell you how it ends but it doesn't end happily anyway um, and uh, you can see that the idea of the film uh, is in a sense a kind of it's about it's not just a physical journey it's about um, symbolically I suppose about our journey through life you know uh, and the the kinds of situations the moral decisions and so on we get faced with and at one point Johnny um, uh, encounters a well actually doesn't it directly encounter but he and the friends who are trying to help him uh, encounter this uh, old Catholic priest uh, who tries to uh, explain to them, you know, the kind of situation they're in morally, you know, what, what they should be thinking about, what they should be doing uh, in this really dire situation, and whether they should take a choice which is a moral choice rather than the obvious choice of just trying to, to cling on to what hope there is left of life or, or to to try and fight their right way out, you know, for example, he, he thinks that Johnny should actually hand himself over to the police and, and take the consequences of his actions. Anyway, um, without going into great detail, I mean, the effect is that um, Johnny, played by James Mason, encounters these very strange characters, and so you get a wonderful selection of, of quite, in some cases, quite strange and eccentric people that he encounters, and very... Uh, peculiar, actually quite disturbing situations that he gets into. But of course, he's he's getting worse and worse physically. He's lost a lot of blood, and James Mason is just brilliant at portraying this uh, figure. That at the beginning he's a gangster, you know, he's threatening, he's he's frightening, uh, but gradually you begin to empathise with him as a wounded human being who's in a desperate situation, and and he. Uh, James Mason is fantastically good at portraying this sort of uh, suffering, really. Anyway, um, so he meets a, a couple of uh, ladies who just come over, who moved over from England, who don't know who he is, and then they find out, they try and help him, but in the end he leaves their house because uh, uh, he doesn't want to get them involved. Uh, he meets a very uh, odd, eccentric old character called Shell, who's a bit of a shambling, sort of misfit character with an old bowler hat wandering around Belfast who is tempted by the £1,000 reward which is out for Johnny, which was a hell of a lot of money in the 1940s, uh, but in fact doesn't betray him, but tries to get him to go to this priest uh, for help. Um, and then uh, one of the most amazing characters in it is played by the other major star in this cast. It's got a very interesting cast. Uh, the other major star is Robert Newton of... Uh, Long, Long John Silver fame. Now, Newton's one of my favourite British actors, and he usually plays wildly, sort of rumbustious characters with rolling eyes, you know, like Long John Silver, etc. 
um, and goes right over the top. In this film, he does play a rather over the top character, but he does it. It's more serious than usual, and um, I think he does it really well. He plays this slightly mad, drunken painter who, at one point, manages to get hold of Johnny, and rather than trying to help him, all he wants to do is to paint him because he he he's desperate to try and get this sense of reality into his paintings and he sees in Johnny the reality of a man who is probably going to die and he knows he's probably going to die and as uh, as the painter character says you can see it in his eyes he wants to paint him and try to capture this 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 state in his painting uh, it's a very peculiar episode that and then eventually there's an enormous punch up in in a pub uh, caused by this painter character played by Robert Newton um, and a number of other things happen, uh, and of course there's um, Johnny's girlfriend, who at the beginning is desperate for him not to go on this road because she can see that he's not actually in a fit state to do it, but in the end he does, and she, it's really very sad and tragic, she's desperately trying to find him uh, through the streets of Belfast, um, and by the way, the streets of Belfast are at this point being patrol, patrolled by hundreds of um, RUC uh, police, and they are portrayed in a surprisingly um, unpleasant way. I mean, uh, by all accounts, they were a pretty tough lot. They're now, they're now called something else, but they were the Royal Ulster Constabulary. And they were the only police in in Great Britain at that time who carried guns, uh, routinely, openly carried guns. Um, they come across uh, pretty much as um, virtually stormtroopers. They're in black uniform with shiny belts with big guns and the rest of it. And they're very sinister. And they're everywhere looking for Johnny, so he's being hunted all through this experience. And the leader of the um, the police, the inspector, is another interesting figure. He is not a, a villain. I mean, he basically thinks he's you know he's got to do his duty. His duty is to catch Johnny. He's murdered somebody. He's got to catch him. And he's he's very determined and ruthless, but not completely without compassion as well. Um, um, Johnny's girlfriend is played by, I think it's Kathleen Ryan. Um, they don't actually give the names of the characters in the credits, so who plays who is a little bit confusing. And there's also Cyril Cusack, who was a very well-known British actor of that period. He's very good as one of the gang. Uh, he was later in uh, Powell and Pressburger movies and, and, and other well-known films. Um, and the music, um, the, the, the film, by the way, is, is both produced and directed by Carol Reed. And the music is very effective as well and that it contributes greatly to the atmosphere the, the really actually really painful and sad atmosphere this film and, and as you go th further and further through this ordeal that Johnny's going through the emotional tension helped by the music gets stronger and stronger and it, it, it takes on a kind of religious overtone it, it's almost like uh, uh, somebody being martyred in front of you I think that's what they're trying to the effect they're trying to create and William Orwin's music uh, contributes greatly to that so he's another figure who ought to be better known he was one of the best British uh, film music composers of the 20th century I think um, and in fact that, that's how I first came to this film I, I came to it by actually being interested in William Orwin's music and then finding out he wrote the music for this as well as other films um, and the photography, the cinema photography is absolutely superb. I mean, the, the scenes, uh, the sets, some of it's shot, I think, actually in, it is shot in the streets of Belfast, some of it's on sets, but they managed to merge them together. And some of the sets are amazing, particularly the house, the painter lives in this basically half-ruined old uh, Victorian house, huge cavernous rooms, dark and um, full of weird paintings. And, all. and that's incredible how that's that's created. The whole atmosphere is, is really gothic which I think fits this film very well um, so overall um, it's a dark film at the very end it ends in this amazing scene in the snow which is uh, very powerful and very moving but I won't tell you what happens um, in case you want to watch the film um, so that's Odd Man Out uh, 1947 um, and I think it really deserves to be known as a, a great British film of the period and if you don't know it, I would very strongly recommend that you uh, watch it. And it's very easy to find. You can find it online, you can buy it on DVD, etc. Uh, so um, that's my recommendation. Um, and uh, as I often forget to say, um, if you've enjoyed this uh, little introduction, uh, please do um, uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you wouldn't mind. Um, so I'll, I'll just leave you with a, um, a little clip from Odd Man Out by Carol Reed, 1947.
You're all right, chum. Want to get in? There's no driver. Come on, Harry. Drop on, chum. No, no. I think the chum's hurt or something. God, he's tight. Tight? Oh, yeah? Let's have a sniff. Oh, lovely. You're right. He's had a drop. Drop. Fuck it, fool. Ask him where he got it. <laughs> Where'd you get it, mate, eh? That all right, mate? OK. Look out, oh, there's our trim. Well, what's the matter? That chap trying to get out of the town. Well, oh, don't blame him. I've been trying to get out for five years now. Have you not caught him yet? Not yet. I think he's out of the district. What have you got in the back? In the back? <laughs> Johnny. All right, Jen. On your way, on your way. Get on with it. Get up. Johnny, put him over there by the fire. Oh, no. up some water quickly. Clean out a bowl and bring it here, and a piece of carbolic soap. Bring that case from my room. I know. All them silver scissors. Yes. What's this you're up to? Look at him, Toba. All the other people I painted were living. But he's different. He's near death. He sees it. He's dying. I don't need to be told that. There are wonderful thoughts in his eyes. You madman. It won't take long. After I fixed him up, he's going straight to hospital. But you know who he is, don't you? All the same, if he gets there soon, he might live. You might say his life is lost already. Not my concern. Patching up his body just so that he can be tried and then executed. I can't help what happens to him later. There's more to be considered than the body, Tova. That may be dying, but the soul is still alive. Job, are you, are you going to operate? In the hot water, fetch a clean towel from the cupboard. Uh, and have you got the stuff that makes the smell in hospitals? Get those things. And uh, you'll keep out of the light, won't you, Tova? Why do you want to do this? Because, Tova, there's something to be said about him before he dies. And about all of us. I can see it, Take care. You might find something you don't understand that'll frighten you. I understand what I see in him. What is it? It's the truth about us all. Is that all? He's doomed. So are we all. Is he really dying, Tober? We're all dying. Well, could you could you not fix him up so that he could walk home like was I'd see him safe along the road? Maybe I'd go with them. Shell. In my room, there's some brandy. Bring it. <laughs> 